Okay, so <clears throat> as I was saying, uh, let's go through the, the question that you wrote onto uh, the Slack channel, for which I try to draft a, an answer here in this document. And, uh, uh, and then we see if there are any uh, further issues to, co to consider. Okay, so <clears throat> the question was, uh, when creating an exam, can a teacher go back to the previous steps? Uh, for example, add more students, change the duration of the slots, and so, or something like that. Uh, so the general rule is always uh, uh, don't uh, do anything that is not uh, uh, explicitly required by the text. So don't, don't make your um, project more complex uh, than is uh, actually required. So you see that here, <clears throat> the actions that are required are creating, executing, and viewing. There is no modifying. Hmm? So uh, it is not a required functionality, so you don't need to do that. Hmm? Only if you have extra time, you want to do that, maybe you can add it, but it's not required. So it will not uh, give you extra score and it's not uh, a problem if you don't implement it, okay? Uh, <clears throat> some modification would be easy to do, for example, adding a new session, but for example, changing the duration of a slot would be a very uh, complex thing to do because we already have the students enrolled and so uh, the, the short answer is no you don't need to do that uh, so you're free not to do in that uh, the second question is uh, uh, giving a score uh, should be a double number or can we assume the scores are integers scores are integers okay at least uh, uh, in the Italian universities plus the special value of 30 with honors 30 and lode and that if you want to store it in some way, you can you can choose how to store it. So for example, you may store a 31 uh, so that every score <clears throat> would be an integer number for you. Um, I didn't really understand this question. If a student is absent, what possible option should we give? Well, if it's absent, the only thing that the teacher should do is to mark, uh, for example, we have a slot tomorrow morning at nine okay uh, this, uh, for an, a student booked for that slot uh, but it didn't show up so what does the teacher do is that okay this person uh, is absent didn't show up for for the exam and just so the slot is closed without assigning any score to the student uh, just with the um, with the note with the, the this uh, absence so it's one of the possibilities um i i i don't i, I don't understand if the question was asking something more or something else. Um, can we have to function on the same page if it serves the same purpose? Uh, in general, yes. So how you organize the content on the pages and also how you organize your code into the source uh, uh, files, it's uh, uh, totally your, um, your freedom. Uh, so you can organize if you, if you feel that if you feel that it's easier for you to put uh, maybe many functions in the same page, go ahead with that. If you prefer to break it down in different pages, also go ahead with that. There is no specific requirement uh, on the structure of the function as long as the different functions can be activated. Okay. Um, then number five, uh, are there an expression time to be respected by professors or students? For example, may a student book an available result only one hour before the exam or can the teacher sign a mark to a future oral exam? Uh, all of these make sense, okay? So um, in a real application, you would have uh, this sort of uh, constraints, uh, but uh, uh, in this example, the exam, we are not uh, enforcing any timing constraints. So it might be strange because, uh, okay, you cannot, uh, uh, you know, you are booking a slot five minutes before or the professor is setting a mark for a slot uh, which is uh, three days in the future. Um, so this should not normally happen, but in this application, we don't uh, uh, want to uh, enforce it. So no uh, timing constraint. You are required to implement no uh, timing constraints. Uh, the reason is very simple uh, for, for, uh, for the bugging, basically, you know, for, for, for the moment. Uh, so we don't want to make it more complex. If I have a slot uh, tomorrow and the application would only let me uh, maybe mark a, a score tomorrow when the slot is due, 
um, then it would be very difficult for me to try the application uh, to, uh, create a new slot uh, occupy it uh, give a score and so on because i would have to wait uh, until the date hmm? or to change the clock on my computer or do uh, all, all sorts of, of complex tricks uh, with timing so that's the reason why we explicitly uh, say that uh, um, uh, without checking, okay? We are not checking uh, timing constraints in any of the steps. Hmm? So this is just, uh, it's, it's not realistic, but it's just for simplifying uh, the exam project. Is the teacher allowed to modify an assigned mark? The response is always the same. It's not required. Hmm? So uh, you're not asked, you're not required to implement it. It's something that, again, it would, it would make sense, but uh, in this uh, uh, in this case, you see that uh, the teacher will specify uh, if he's present. Then the teacher will specify a mark once, hmm? and there's no here in the text uh, um, the uh, the option for changing it uh, afterwards. Uh, number seven, it's a long question, but just uh, it's uh, simple say, okay, uh, I create an exam made of three steps, uh, selecting the students, uh, um, and then define the duration of the slot, uh, and then define the sessions, okay? Um, the question was, but uh, can these three steps uh, be repeated? So can I go back and add a new student or change the session or change the duration of the slot and something like that? Um, the the actually uh, this is the same question uh, as question number one. Okay, uh, there is no requirement uh, uh, to be able to go back and change any of these uh, uh, parameters, either the students or the sessions. Um, maybe adding a student is not very dangerous; it will also be easy to do, or adding a new session also. That would be easy to do, but you, you're not required to do that. So actually, it's uh, don't, don't uh, invest any time, any uh, extra time. Um, just imagine what would mean to change the duration of an existing session when some students are already booked into the slots. Okay, it's much more complex than you can think at the beginning, and so we we don't want to deal into that complexity of. Uh, of, um, of dealing with slots that are already occupied and then you want to change the section, maybe you want to extend it, maybe you want to shrink it or delete it altogether, it, it gets complex, uh, very very, uh, very quickly gets very complex and we don't want that kind of complexity. Uh, so the answer is again, no. Uh, there is actually the three steps uh, don't have the um, uh, absolute order Okay, if you prefer to do the steps in a different order or to do them all together in the same interface, uh, then uh, it's, it's up to you, you're, you're free to do that, okay? So these four phases do, don't necessarily um, are to be executed in this order. Um, the, um, of course, uh, before defining the sessions, you have to define the duration of the slot because only the duration of the slots can tell you whether a session is valid and how many slots uh, it will contain. But the other, you can select the slots before the teachers and so on. Um, just remember that uh, you need to, to show the number of uh, um, the difference between the slots and the students. So at a given point when the, when the teacher is defining the, uh, the sessions, uh, the, the, the list of students should already be decided. Um, then number eight, if the selected student does not book the oral exam, do you have to consider is I'm withdrawn or absent? Uh, I will call him uh, absent. So I have a list of students, uh, like what happens, for example, in uh, in this course. Okay, you have the list of students that um, submitted the the project, uh, and then I make the list of all of this, these people that are supposed to take the oral exam. Somebody doesn't want to take the oral exam for for their reasons, so. Uh, I, I make um, their markers in this case as absent. Hmm. Uh, point nine is uh, it's an interesting one because the uh, it's um, and the meaning of the word exam that I used uh, in the in the text. Uh, the difference between exam and course. Uh, okay, um, and uh, this question introduces the term call, hmm, like uh, 
uh, like the Italian appello hmm, uh, for each course. So uh, the, the rational point is that, of course, we have one course hmm, and, uh, for example, this course, this one, web applications, and this course may have the many different calls or exam dates. So what uh, I'm calling here the exam is the single individual exam date, the single individual call for, uh, so the, that one course will have many exams in July, in June, in September, in January, and so on. Okay, so every time you may create an exam, it's the, a new exam for your course. And uh, uh, of course you are picking uh, a subset of the students from the students of the course. So the course as a whole has a, a, a big list of students. For every exam or for every call, you can use a call and exam as a, uh, equivalent uh, words. Uh, for every exam or call, you select a subset of the students. So the, the, from the big list, you select a shorter list, and these are is the shorter list that will give the exam in that date. Hmm? Um, and the date is composed of the schedule of the different sessions. Uh, okay, number 10, what do we have to show in real time when the teacher creates an exam? The only requirement is uh, the, um, the difference here in number four. Uh, this difference uh, should be computed between the number of students uh, that we selected in point one and the number of slots uh, that are generated by the session that are selected in, in point three. Uh, just, uh, uh, and so uh, as long as, while, so I, I'm, I imagine uh, I'm the teacher, uh, I start drawing one session of uh, two, two hours and the system tells me, okay, you have 20 students uh, and uh, right now we have uh, uh, eight slots available. So there are 12 more students to go. And so keep adding sessions uh, until all the slots at least match the number of available students. So you can create some more. That's why it's uh, um, positive of zero. You, you, we, may, we may have more slots than students to give some freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, but we cannot close the sessions until we have at least uh, one slot per student. Um, I will drop in with the, uh, the question from Paolo, who is say, asking if the teacher is to select first an exam for that course before selecting the students. Um, it, it's all the point one, okay? Um, when actually the, the, the task here is creating an exam. So I create a new exam, September, creating the September exam. It amounts to, so creating this exam, amounts to selecting the students and defining the slots. So it's not, not one before the other, is that creating the exam means uh, defining the students and uh, defining the slots, okay? So uh, the exam doesn't have a date by itself because it's all the sessions that have a date. So we open a procedure saying, okay, create a new exam, and then this procedure will let you select the students and select the, uh, the, the sessions. Um, okay, uh, what that? so we were at number 10. Uh, 11, uh, the procedure must be presented in various steps or everything can be shown in the same page. Again, uh, it's uh, similar to a question before, it's your choice. It's, uh, you can organize your pages as you prefer. What's the meaning of the sentence for use of the bug? We assume that it corresponds to the current uh, time without checking. And this, uh, this question appears here in uh, in uh, in executing your test, and this is the what we were discussing before when we discussing uh, we were mentioning the, the timing constraints. Okay, uh, so you don't need to be on Friday morning to insert an evaluation mark for a slot that is scheduled to be on Friday morning. You can do it even today. Yeah, we, if it's a Wednesday, uh, just for, for, for the ability of playing with the, with the scores and playing with the application, okay? 
in, an, in a real application, I, I wouldn't be able to assign a score in a date, uh, in an exam date that is in the future, okay? The system would not allow me in a real case. In this case, we don't care. Do we have this store in the database, the session inserted by the teacher, or can we save and retrieve it all the information about the slot? This is very interesting because you are already thinking about uh, how it's uh, happening. Uh, actually, the notion of a session is only really required in this phase here when they are defined. Okay, so I'm saying a session uh, maybe on Monday from uh, 10 to 14. Okay. So it's a four hour session. And depending on the number of the duration of the slot, this will mean uh, maybe eight students, maybe 15 students or whatever, okay? And I create the slots starting from this session. The information about the session um, is not needed anymore because from, the from this minimal set of requirements. Hmm? So, uh, because the students only see the slots, the students don't need to see this session. Session is just a way for helping the teacher or defining some consecutive exams uh, um, in simpler ways. So this is a time frame in which uh, I want to do. Some, I'm available to do some 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 oral tests, and uh, and so the system will break it uh, into smaller intervals. After that, uh, the session is this this concept, this information about the session is not needed anymore. The student doesn't see the session, the student doesn't care, only sees a list of slots and picks one, okay? And even when uh, we we execute this, the test, uh, we are taking one slot at a time. You see that here, even in this part here of executing the oral test, uh, we always uh, talk about slots and not about sessions. So this means that uh, you uh, we are free not to store the sessions into the database. The session will be something that you are using only when you're creating them, and then when you, you know, save the session, add the session to your schedule, that will immediately create, you know, eight slots, and uh, the system will work with those. Uh, this is feasible, so we can avoid storing sessions in the database because there is no functionality for deleting a session, for editing a session, and something like that. So this is actually linked to the functionality that the system offers. So that's one of the reasons that this functionality of editing the sessions is not required here because it would make not just the application but also the database more complex. So in this case, you um, you don't need to think about a bigger or a future application just about the functionality that you need right now. And, the, and in this case, uh, it's perfectly no. Uh, possible okay, not to store the sessions, but only the slots. And the session will be something just more, let's say, in the front end, just for showing, for creating them. Uh, the final question, uh, it's important because I forgot to write it in the, in the text. Uh, we don't need to manage any multiple access for booking. So the only problem is booking uh, because all the other um, operations are done uh, maybe by the teacher or are or are uh, viewing operations so they, they don't change data. But, but booking is something that could create a conflict, a conflict. So if you have two different students that are trying to book the same slot, um, the system in general should, should, should be careful not to assign a slot to two students. Uh, um, but in this kind of concurrency operations is not something that we are worked on in the, in the course. Uh, so we are not requiring it uh, uh, during the exam projects. So the, the answer is no, you don't need to manage uh, this concurrency. You may assume that only one user, one student uh, at a time uh, is booking uh, uh, is booking a slot. Uh, I think that this uh, uh, question should be added here so that I will reply later so that we don't lose track of what we had in the chat. Okay, so again, Paolo is asking when the teacher sees the results of review, do we have to show students that are not booked yet? 
uh, when the theta sees the results of our view here, the view is shown not booked yet. Uh, well, I was imagining when I wrote this uh, sentence uh, to have uh, the list of students uh, that I selected in point one and say, okay, for this student is already passed, uh, you gave it 28, uh, this will pass uh, on Thursday. And uh, um, it makes sense that uh, for the students that are not booked yet, you can, you, you still have the line with that student. So I would say yes. Uh, um, so right now the text doesn't, require it so we could uh, either show that student that didn't book yet so with a with a um, with a label not booked uh, or you can just drop the student only show the ones that are uh, have booked uh, the text uh, right now is free but i think it's not much more complex and it will be more complete to have the full list so that you can have the, the real overview so uh, what what has happened for everybody so I would add the, uh, this question here, and the answer is uh, yes. I will correct also the text. You know that in the next days I will pu I will publish uh, an edited version of this text so that uh, most of the questions here should be already maybe clarified by by the description. Uh, Claudio is telling us that uh, what should we show in the home page for the students like notification just with ed or like a research uh, we are not requiring anything special uh, i would uh, stop uh, with the um with the authentication information because until you enter your id the system doesn't know which are the courses that you are enrolled and so it doesn't know which courses to show you so a research like uh, uh, searching all the call, all the exams, uh, all the slots for other courses that are not yours, uh, it seems something useless, okay? Uh, and so uh, the idea is just uh, um, give me your ID and then you go to the second page where, uh, or that you feel you enable the page, you enable the functionality for booking and viewing the slots and so on. So in this case, I would just ask for the authentication and I don't see any, any other functionality that it could be useful in that context. It's not a real authentication, you know, okay? It's just a, an ID number because there's no verification. You only verify that this uh, uh, ID is valid, but uh, Maybe it's not uh, the same students, it's a friend of, the, or of him uh, that is connecting with this ID. Again, we, we, did, we didn't want to have two databases with two passwords. And... Uh, Giacomo, can we assume that there are only two courses as we asked in the for me, or do we have to work on a general basis? No, uh, the application should be general, uh, but uh, uh, the database should only have two courses, okay? Um, in the, you know, that in all the, in all the text, it doesn't set any limits. So it should work with any number of teachers, any number of students. Uh, um, the only uh, the only say limit which is unrealistic is that every teacher only has one course so we didn't want to do the many to many association between teachers and courses this is not realistic in in our university uh, every teacher has three or four different courses but uh, in this uh, example okay uh, this is the only limitation for the rest you can have a multiple number of teachers uh, and uh, of course uh, as many courses and uh, but only in populating the database uh, uh, you are you are required to to do only two hmm? so the 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 answer would be no you cannot assume that uh, 
okay okay i will put it into uh, francesca <clears throat> when the teacher logs in can we consider an email as a username or do we have to consider teach the teacher id um we don't have any specific uh, requirement for how the um, the teacher login and password is uh, specified so you can choose whether is to use just a nickname or the email or or the id so it's uh, it's free for you so you have let me just check uh what is it? user login will be protected with a token okay but it doesn't tell anything specific okay so we are not uh, suggesting any way over the other there isn't a defined number of pages to design uh well, uh, there's no, um, it, de it depends on how you want to organize. Uh, uh, for example, uh, for the students' uh, functionality, we have the booking and the viewing. You could have them in two different pages or both of them in the same page. Hmm? It depends on you. Actually, they will be different React components, so it's up to you just well, whether you want to put both components in the same page, uh, uh, maybe after login. Sorry, after the authentication of the student, uh, you immediately go to the viewing of his situation, and uh, then you can have a, a button for selecting a slot, uh, for example. Uh, or when uh, so, this one would be the same. The say the I said the home page for the students uh, would correspond to this functionality, or maybe we an home page uh, with no functionality, and uh, enter a page for this, or have two different pages for the, the two functionalities. It's up to you, actually. It's not, it's more, more like, uh, uh, yes, even even the, in the creating an exam, uh, you can do it in different pages or have one big form or one big page uh, where you are collecting the various pieces of information, info, information in different steps. It's not, uh, in, the, in, in the second call, uh, of course, we have this, uh, board and uh, everything should be contained into that board so it was basically a one page application here is more sequential processes so you want you want to pack everything to more one more pay one, uh, less a small number of pages so uh, you can do that just remember just uh, in the in the readme we are asking uh, uh, to specify the routes so that we can have a look uh, have an idea of uh, what are the pages that you are designed uh, and, uh, and of course, uh, uh, these pages will contain the main components. Uh, so if you just give, give the list in the readme, it's, it will help us in trying to decode, understand your project when we, when we check it. Um, <clears throat> so let's copy also this question there. And then we go to Claudio. Is a student uh, passed the exam, we should remove him from the list of selectable students from another exam. Uh, yes, if, oh, okay. Uh, this, yes, it's uh, actually, it's, um, it's an important uh, point uh, because I forgot that. Uh, in the point here, one year, the teacher selects a subset of the students uh, this subset should only include the students that don't have a score already. Okay, so this I will correct the text here to specify that. So if you uh, give an exam and you are uh, uh, you are withdrawn or we are absent, of course you can book for the next exam. But once you have a score, a positive score from 18 uh, above, uh, then you cannot select any other call for the same the other exam for the same course okay so that yes this is important uh yes they should be removed from the selectable ones yes
Okay. Um, <clears throat> there, there was no questions, but I'm asking one. Uh, are the slots or should the slots or the session be displayed in a calendar or just in a list? Okay. Uh, you see that here, there's no requirement to actually show the slots into a calendar interface with dates and hours and so on. Uh, so in you are not required uh, it's again it's your choice okay but even just having a, a list of slots uh, with the dates uh, would be enough and if you want to paint them over a calendar background and so seeing them and say graphically in the different days you can do that uh, of course but it's not required for, for so from the graphical point of view in this case this, this could be simpler uh, even because it's a, a bit more complex on, on the on the on the back end. Um, if a student will delete an appointment, is possible to book another one? Uh, yes, yes, of course. Because at that point, uh, the student will not be booked anywhere, so we will have access to booking a slot, not already taken by other students, of course. Okay. Um, I um, for for those of you who already saw the la the, the previous uh, exams, uh, I added the, this last page here about the submission procedure because uh, there were a lot of people that uh, actually failed to do this correctly, and so forgot to tag the the, the project. Uh, for, um, uh, forgot to um, to install with npm all the needed packages uh, and uh, uh, so I, I reported here actually the, the last command you should give and the command that we will give I have a script uh, actually to extract the project that does exactly these instructions uh, so my suggestion just to be sure uh, to try uh, in an empty directory maybe on a different computer from yours uh, to uh, to clone and uh, and, uh, run, and run your project uh, um, uh, from, from scratch okay on an empty machine uh, also be aware of the uh, of the packages that you are uh, installing because it happened many times uh, in the in the previous uh, calls uh, that uh, some students uh, installed some packages at the system level and so with the install uh, minus g in the global uh, um, uh, NPM repository, and uh, so they didn't, they were they weren't listed 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 sorry in the package.json of the project. So when I downloaded the same project, uh, NPM install will not download those projects that you have installed in your at the system level, 
and they are not listed and not mentioned into package.json. So then I had to, 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 <laughs> to, to try to add them and download them and so on. So uh, just check that every package that you are really using uh, is inside package.json is mentioned. And when you do the NPM install, everything will be downloaded, okay? And uh, the suggestion is uh, never to install a package at the system level so that you know that every project will only rely on the local resources. So this was the problem that, okay, uh, for which, uh, okay, we have to spend more time, but uh, uh, worse, uh, the, no, some, there were some, some points, some scores, uh, there were no, uh, assigned negative scores that were assigned uh, due to the, the lack of, uh, of completeness of the, um, of the submission, okay? Um, so just uh, try, try it before you really submit it. Okay, so do you have any other points to discuss? Okay, so I would say that if there are no further questions, uh, uh, we can uh, close uh, uh, the, the meeting. Uh, of course, the, the, the Slack channel will be still active. Uh, so feel free to ask questions anytime. I would really prefer if you ask questions on the channel instead of directly with dark messages to me. Uh, because in that way, we can have a reply that is valid for, for everybody. And uh, uh, so until the day of the exam, we will use this, uh, this channel uh, for, for supporting you in, the, in this exam. The deadline is the 9th of September, so the full day of the 9th. Uh, during the, the day after, so the, from the 10th of September, which is the, the date of the exam, the official date one, date, I will uh, download the project and we'll check that everything is, is ready. And then we will schedule some, uh, uh, some slots uh, uh, for 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 the oral discussions, okay, in, like we did in the in in summer, in the summer time. Um, I don't think there are any deadlines uh, or strict deadlines for graduations or for enrollment or any of other your student uh, bureaucracy. Uh, concerning the, how fast we should close the, the oral exams and so on. Uh, but if any of you has some specific requirements uh, about, uh, I need to have the exam early because I don't know what kind of deadline you have, just tell me and uh, we'll try to, to, to be flexible. I, I hope uh, we can close uh, all the, it, of course it depends on the number of, of projects that it will be uh but uh, i hope that uh, let's pick a calendar okay the the date is here i have other exams there but uh, uh, probably I, I could publish the results at the beginning of this week uh, and uh, so i have the the oral tests uh, Maybe we can also st already start uh, here, but uh, uh, in any case, we will close uh, uh, all everything by by the 25 of September. I, if there are not many many projects, uh, probably it will be faster. We could also probably close by the by 20, but uh, of course. Uh, uh, until the last day, it's very difficult for me to understand how many projects are, are going to be submitted. So because there's a, a good number of people uh, who enrolled in the classroom, but uh, not everybody is actually working on the project. But we'll see, maybe we have some more, uh, you know, more precise updates when we are closer to the deadline. So if you have any timing uh, requirements, just let me know, we'll try to sort it out.
Okay, so I I don't see any further questions coming out. So I thank uh, all of you for being today with me. Maybe from uh, from the beach if you are there, or or from the mountains. Uh, but uh, that's the the good part uh, of this strange pandemics. And uh, so we close the meeting and uh, we'll see each other in a couple of weeks uh, when the deadline for the exam is over and we can uh, finally have a look at your at your project in uh, in by by tomorrow i will polish this set of uh, responses and i will publish uh, the final version of, of the text so just remember to re-download the text so that you have the final version okay so thanks uh, for to everybody and see you next time. Bye bye. Let's close the recording.